Hi, so today I'm going to show you how to set up a simple Word document, how to format the margins, how to use the fonts, how to change your font size and colour, how to use the indents, bullet points, headers and footers and page numbers. So let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is to simply look at our margins. And as you can see at the moment, I have these two rulers, one at the top and one to the side. Now, if you can't see these rulers, if you just go up to the view tab here, and there is a ruler tick box here. If I click off, my rulers disappear, and I check it, and my rulers appear. Where your ruler is gray is your margin, and where your ruler is white, is the context or the content of your page. We can change these margins by quite simply going up to the layout tab. And there's an icon at the end here that says margins. If you just click on the drop down here, you're given a number of different options. So this is your normal options and you can see by these blue lines, this is where your margins will be. If you want a slightly bigger page, then you can narrow your margins or you can have larger margins at the bottom and the top rather than the sides. You can have very wide margins, you can have mirrored margins, or you can customize your margins. If you go to the bottom tab here, then you'll be presented with this dialog box. And in this dialog box, you can see all the different measurements for your margins. Now at the moment, they're equal, but you can change these by either clicking on the up and down arrows. And as you can see, as I do that, the text on this icon box here actually moves. So you can see which margin you're adjusting and how you're adjusting it. And then obviously down here, you can apply it just from this point forward or you can apply it from the whole document. So the next thing to discuss is our font. If you're just simply going to type in your document, your font will be the default, which is for this particular version of Word is Calibri. Now you can very easily change your font. You can highlight it and make sure you're on the Home tab. And this area here is all related to your font. So if you click on the drop down, you're given huge amounts of options here in alphabetical order to select your different fonts. And as you go down, you can see the different effects that you'll get from the different fonts. So for example, if I pick something a bit wacky, you can now see that my font has changed. In order to increase the size of your font, you can either go to this tab here, click on the drop down, and select the different font size that you want, or you can simply highlight the number and just type in the value and press enter. Or you can use these up and down keys here. So if you want to reduce the size of your font, you hit the right one. And to increase, you hit the left one. This icon here, this refers to changing the case of your text. So if you wanted it all to be in lowercase, uppercase, sentence case, to capitalize each word if you were doing a title, or you can toggle case. So for example, if you've done this, which is to have a lowercase letter at the beginning of your words and then typed in capitals, you can simply toggle between the two. So we can also use bold, we can use the italics, underline, strike through, and then obviously you've got these if you wanted to use that for a date. So superscript is, for example, if I wanted to write the 12th. Now, sometimes it does it by default. If you press the Enter key, it will recognize that as a date. But if it doesn't for whatever reason, then you can simply highlight these two letters and click on this one, and it will actually turn it into that superscript there. Equally, it will use, put it at the bottom as well if that's what you prefer. So let's just type our text in again. We've also got this word art here. And if you click on the drop down, there's lots of different options here where you can turn your letters into a more artistic font. 
And that really is uh, something to do to sort of play around, select your different colors. And um, so for example here, um, if you wanted to make a poster or something like that, you can play around with those, all those different fonts. So if we just go back, the easy way to go back um, is Command or Control Z, and it will just go back one step. If you wanted to change the color of your font, you use this tab here. If you click on the drop down, then you'll see you're presented with a number of different color options. If you don't see the color that you want, if you click on more colors, then you'll be presented with this dialog box here, which is the color wheel. I don't know why it's doing this, which is the color wheel. And here you can move this little circular disc around to identify exactly the color that you need. Alternatively, if you click on the icons at the top here, you'll find that you have a number of different options that you can choose from. So if I click on the red, then you can simply see that my text has turned red. Okay, so that's how you deal with the font in your Word document. If you want to type something such as a letter, which we're gonna go ahead and do, then you're probably looking at font size 12. Okay, so now we're going to look at the layout of your page. So if we were typing a letter, for example, we probably want to put the address on the right hand side here. So I'm just going to type out an address. OK, so now we've got our address, we want to pop it onto the other side of our page. In order to do that, we need to use the indenting tools, which are these here. Just make sure you're in the Home tab here. And then we'll need to use these here. So if you wanted the address to stay like this and to be lined up on the left hand side, you can use the tab key to move each line across and they will line up perfectly using those tab keys. If however you decided you wanted the address to be indented and lined up on the right here, you just simply highlight your address and go up and click on this icon here, align to right. And then you can see that all your address is lined up to the right. Now, if I then go to the next line, if I put my cursor here, just simply press the return key. Now you'll see that your cursor goes directly below the address, but maybe you want to start your letter over here. All you need to do is go back up and click on the left indent, align to left and your cursor will go to the left hand side of the page. And here you can begin to type. Okay, so I've just typed out or copied and pasted a series of repetitive texts. So if you want to know how to copy and paste, as I've just done then, all you do need to do is to highlight what you want to copy and then you simply press the Command or Control and C key, that's to copy, and to paste, you hit the Command or Control V key. Alternatively, if you go up to the Home key, you've got your Copy and Paste icons up here. So you copy, then you place your cursor where you want your text to go, and you simply go up and click Paste. So if we decided that we wanted a title here, then all we need to do is to push down our letter, so if you click at the beginning of the top part of your text, which here it's the Dear Sir Madam, just hit the return key to move the text down the page. And click on about the line where you want your title to go. And then we're going to go to the center icon, center text icon up here, and to begin our title. Okay, so in order to make this text stand out, you might want to consider highlighting it increasing the size of the text using this increase font size and then perhaps underlining it using the underline here. Okay, so if we just move out, you can see that this is how our letter is working out so far. Now, if this was a report or perhaps you had to type something which had numerous pages, 
you might want to consider putting in a page number. So in order to do that, the Word document has what we call headers and footers. And that means that you can place a piece of text or number or image or logo into the top and the bottom of your document and it will continue throughout your document. So there's two ways to access your headers and footers. And the first and easiest way is to simply double click at the bottom or the top of your document. The second way to access your headers and footers is to simply go up to the insert tab and then go along to this icon or this icon, header and footer, and simply click. There you'll be given a drop down menu where you can select from a number of different options, but we'll just choose a simple blank option here. And here you can quite clearly see we have a footer and a header. The foot is normally where we consider putting a page number. So in this case, if I want my page number to be in the center, I simply go up to header and footer tab and this will only appear when you're actually in the header and footer dialog. So go up to header and footer and go along to page number. You click on the drop down, you'll be given several different options page number, format page numbers, and remove page numbers. If you just want, simply want to place a page number in, you click the page number tab, and then this dialog box appears, which gives you the option to put it into the left, center, right, inside, and outside. So if we just choose center, show number on the first page, you don't have to show it on the first page, but in this instance I will, and then click OK. And you can see there, I have a page number at the bottom. Now, with the headers and footers, once I click off my header and footer, you can see that this text goes a slightly darker, sorry, a slightly lighter shade, and it's turned gray. And what that will mean is that that text is in your footer and not part of your main text. So if, for example, I had a duplicate page or I had an additional page, I'm just gonna copy and paste this to demonstrate, you can see that the page number for number two appears in the subsequent footer. And once again, if I decided I wanted to put some text in my footer, you can see that whatever I put on page one continues throughout the rest of my document and continues on page two. And that's the purpose of a header or a footer. So if I click off, you can see that it goes that slightly gray shade. And in exactly the same way, if I wanted to put the date up here and double click off, then you can see that it will simply continue throughout my document. Okay, the final thing I'm going to show in this demonstration is how to use bullet points, because I think it's one of the things that does crop up quite a lot in Word documents. So obviously you have your tab key, which is left of the Q key on your keyboard. And if you press it, you can see how it indents one tab along. Now, once you do use that tab key, then occasionally what you'll find is that when you go to the end of your document or the, the end of the paragraph and you hit the return key, you'll find that your cursor indents one tab along. If you go up to the top here and look at your margin, you can see this little arrow here on your ruler, which is indicating the tab where your cursor has ended up. So what you need to do is click on this little triangle and just move it back to the beginning of your margin here. So just move your cursor down to where you want your first bullet point to happen and then ensure you're on the home tab and then there's a collection of different tabs that you can use up here. The first one will just be a bullet point with a simple point and then you can simply write text and then as you press enter you'll just continually get the next bullet point. Now if you hit the return key twice it will send you back to the margin alignment of the original text here. If not you simply go back and place your cursor at the end of the sentence of the previous bullet, press the enter key again and you'll get your next bullet point. 
hit the enter key again and it will send you back to the margin and align to the left. Alternatively, you can use numbers, which is this bullet point icon here. And if you hit the drop down, it will give you a couple of different options of how those bullet points will appear. So you could have numbers, numbers and brackets, letters, Roman numerals, just select the ones that suit you the best. So if we just go to a simple number point, and all I do is just copy and paste this. And then again, it will automatically go down to your second bullet point. But if you don't want the third one, just hit the delete key, delete key again, delete key again, and you'll go back to your margin. So that just gives you a very basic overview of how to set up a simple document in Word. I hope it's helped. If it has, please subscribe. Please do leave any comments or any ideas you might have for future videos and have a great day.